found out we have the Kosu artifact. In 1963, three rock hunters were exploring the mountains of Eastern California with hopes to find geodes to sell at their gift shop. They gathered a bunch of them and took them home where they proceeded to cut them in half. However, one of the geodes practically broke their new crystal saw in half when trying to cut it open. Instead of finding crystals, they actually discovered something more intriguing. Inside the rock mass was a perfectly circular porcelain-like section. In the center of the section was a tiny magnetic pin. An x-ray of the rock revealed that there was also a spring or helix at one of the ends. From there, people realized that it resembles a modern-day spark plug. However, it is theorized that this rock is around 500,000 years old. But spark plugs were not invented until the 19th century. So this has left people thinking that it's proof of alien visitors saying that it came from their spacecraft. Meaning, they're way more clever than we realized since they created this technology thousands of years before we did. Others believe that it was left behind by time travelers. Then you have the skeptics that have tried to debunk it by saying it simply was just a spark plug from the 1920s and then someone threw it out so it's just a piece of someone's trash that we're all hyping up. But honestly, you choose what you want to believe. Coming in at number 9, we have the menorah of the second temple. The English weren't the only ones who would go around taking cool stuff from cool places. I mean, let's be honest. If we go back in time far enough, we will find that every group of people took things from everywhere. Well, the Romans thought that they would take a trip down to Jerusalem to steal the menorah of the second temple. They didn't destroy it, but they brought it back to the Temple of Peace. That is a very strange thing to call a place where you keep a bunch of stolen artifacts from foreign places. Like, oh, this is is the Temple of Peace? How did you get that menorah? Ruthless bloodshed? Yeah, that seems nice. Well, the Temple of Peace was eventually burnt to the ground and it's unknown if the menorah of the Second Temple survived this. Really, there's two options here. Either it was destroyed along with the temple or it was taken to Carthage by a group of people called the Vandals. And guys, remember to hit that like button because it really helps us out. Coming in at number eight, we have the Barber Dimes. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I say the Barber Dimes is me walking out with a fresh haircut. You know what I'm I'm saying? But this is actually something much more valuable than me looking really, really good. The Barber Dimes were minted back in 1907 and they used to be very common, but now there's only a few of them left. That's not the part that makes this story so interesting. There is a treasure of missing Barber Dimes that could be somewhere in Colorado. Six massive barrels of Barber Dimes were transported through Colorado and back in 1907, they never showed up to their destination. They could have been stolen or they could have fallen into the Colorado Black Canyon. If you were to find this stash of dimes today, because of how rare they are and how many there are, they would be worth millions of dollars. So not a bad find. Coming in at number seven, we have Sappho's poems. Sappho is considered one of the greatest minds of ancient Greece. And while there's quite a bit of her work that the world has been able to salvage, it would seem that her poems were lost to the world. I'm not one to dip into poems that often or really ever, but it would have been so interesting to see what poetry looked like in ancient Ancient Greece. Also, so much of the literature and knowledge from that era was written and cataloged by men. So it would be cool to see what that era looked like through the eyes of a woman. I mean, I suspect that it would all be insightful pieces that opened up my mind, but they might have just been love stories or the regular frustrations of typical poetry. I don't know, dude. They were lost and we can't read them. I would hope that one day we find these poems and everyone thinks that they're beautiful and they change the way we interact with each other. But when she wrote them, she thought that they all sucked. That would be very funny. Coming in number six, we have the Lost Library of the Moscow Tsars. One of the greatest groupings of ancient writings was put together by the Grand Duchy of Moscow. He collected writings from several ancient civilizations, including the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, and it's thought that many others were also housed in this place. The location and contents of this library were always very secret. It became an even bigger secret when Ivan the Terrible was in power. It said that Ivan hid the library so the knowledge would never leak into anyone's hands except his own. Well, we know that Ivan was eventually killed in a revolution and it's thought that the location of the library was also lost with him. Either that or the people revolting decided to burn the writings not knowing what they were or how to read them. Or the library could still be somewhere out in Moscow waiting to be discovered. It would be a great find that would open up the world to a priceless collection of literature from a almost forgotten time. Coming in at number five we have Blackbeard's treasure. Blackbeard spent two long years out at sea as a pirate. Before that he worked as a privateer and probably thought 
the money was trash and that's why he turned to sinking boats and stealing booty. The boat he rode on was the Queen Mary's Revenge, which is one of the most badass things I have ever heard. But eventually, the law caught up with him and his head was chopped off. But this dude was a little rascal. Before he died, he let everyone know that he had a massive treasure buried somewhere, but he didn't tell anyone where it was. Now this might have been a pirate's bluff. Something to send out to the world so he would never be forgotten and send a bunch of hopeful men out to sea looking for something that wasn't there. Or maybe he was telling the truth and there's a multi-million dollar prize hidden away somewhere. Coming in at number 4 we have the Bayeux Tapestry's final panels. Recording history before the printing press was hard. You had to either write everything down by hand or make a super long tapestry like this one. There's no recording it on your phone and then uploading it into the cloud where it will live forever in a file that no one will ever look at. The Bayeux Tapestries was created when William the Conqueror smashed through England and reshaped Europe forever. People think it took years to make but the last chunk is missing so there's no conclusion to the story. To this day, no one knows where these final panels are. That would be like if thousands of years from now someone dug up the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe and everything was there right up to the point where Thanos grabbed the gauntlet from Stark and then it stopped. You know how much that would suck dude? Give me the end of the story. I need it. I didn't even know this thing was missing until right now and I'm already rattled. Coming in at number 3 we have JFK's brain. Here's a very strange one. Someone went out of their way to take the brain of the president of the United States after he was assassinated. No one knows who took his brain or where his brain went. There's a lot of theories about this. Some people think it could have been the FBI or the CIA to cover up that there was a second shooter. Other people think that his brother took his brain as evidence. Some people think that the government hid his brain because it revealed that he was slowly dying from some sickness and they wanted that to be hidden from the public. No matter what the case, it seems like it would be pretty hard to lose track of someone's brain when that someone is the president who was just assassinated by being shot in the head. The brain would be something you would want to hold on to for a very long time. Coming in at number 2 we have the Honjo Masamune. This is the last known sword made by the person believed to be the best sword maker of all time. The sword was made somewhere between 1260 and 1340 and passed down from generation to generation. It probably would have outlasted all of us because the craftsmanship is so exquisite but after World War II there was an order from the Allies to take all weapons from Japanese people in Japan. This stretched to even historical weapons. Once it passed hands from its last owner to the Allied forces, its location was lost to man. The sword might have been thrown in the ocean, it might have been melted down, it might have been stolen and now is kept somewhere safe. But if you are the greatest sword maker in Japan, then that would put you in the running for the greatest sword maker in the world who has ever made swords ever. So this weapon that now is lost could be the greatest remaining sword on the planet. And coming into the number one spot, we have Genghis Khan's grave. Probably one of the most ruthless conquerors of all time, this dude had the largest empire in history. The Mongolians are the only people to beat Russia in a land war in the winter. He spread his seed so much that 1% of the planet has his DNA and he killed so many people that it actually lowered the temperature of the planet. And if we look back to where he came from, he basically was living in a village of tents. You want to talk about starting from the bottom, now you're here? This guy did it bigger than anyone. And to cap all of this off, after he was done, he didn't want to be remembered. He didn't want anyone to pray to him or fear him or use him as a force to control other people. He wouldn't let anyone paint a picture of him when he was alive, so anything we see of him was made after he died. So all these images could be highly inaccurate. And he also hid the location of his grave. Genghis Khan requested that he be buried at an unmarked grave in the heart of the Birkin Kaldun Mountains. Then everyone who was part of the burial was killed so no one would know the location. And it's rumored that horses were released up the hills so no one could follow tracks. Obviously this guy caused more death than anyone else but this is still something crazy. Coming up in our number 10 spot we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly, just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance appeared just like a stick. But then after closer inspection, he discovered that 
that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our ninth spot, we have the Roswell Rock. The Roswell Rock, as featured in a couple of episodes of the show Ancient Aliens, is a very weird rock with a detailed design. The rock is uniform in color, unusually smooth, and has a design protruding from the surface of it. This rock was found in Roswell, New Mexico in 2004. A man named Robert Ridge, a deer hunter, apparently found this rock half sticking out of the ground. He also discovered that it had strange magnetic properties. Upon analyzing it, people have realized that the rock's design exactly matches a crop circle that was found in England in 1996. Some people believe that it's just a man-made copy of the crop circles. Other people believe that it conveys some sort of message from aliens. After experts have analyzed the design, they notice that it's a pattern of a sun and a moon inside a circle. Linda Moulton Howe, an investigative journalist, believes that the sun, moon, and skies are present throughout the solar system and all the galaxies, meaning maybe aliens are trying to teach us about astronomy. Or the rock contains some sort of date for some event that has happened or will happen. Making our way down the list at number 8, we have the ancient airplane. Researchers have noticed that the Incas left behind some very interesting objects. One of the more notable ones are the figures that are small and golden that closely resemble modern jet planes. Upon analyzing them, people have noticed that the figures have what appears to be wings, a stabilizing tail, and landing gears. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that they are a figure of planes, but we know that planes were not created back then. This has led people to believe that they indeed were in contact with extraterrestrials that had advanced technology. Whereas others think they're supposed to represent flying creatures like bees or fish. But again, it's for you to decide. Coming in at number 7, we have the alien head. Okay, this one, I can't lie, it's pretty weird. In 2017, a man in Cusco came forward with an artifact that he claims he found in the southern desert of Peru. This artifact appears to be a mummified life form, eerily resembling an alien. An x-ray concluded that the skull had angled eyelids with shallow eye sockets, two nostrils, and a narrow slit-type mouth. Under the skull, you can see exposed bone. Now, the skull is covered in a type of clay that gives the skull a more alien-type appearance. But it is discovered that it is a real skull. But it isn't concluded that if it's an alien skull or if it's just an animal skull that has been preserved and then morphed in appearance because of the clay coating. But What's weird is apparently there have been tons of skulls discovered in Peru. Lots of them have elongated skulls, which aliens are said to have. Maybe it's evidence that alien species were once inhabitants there. In our sixth spot, we have the alien hands. In our sixth spot, we have the alien hands. Okay, this is where it gets even weirder. In the same area where the skull was found, they found a hand with only three elongated fingers. It has nothing to do with the previously mentioned skull though. The skull is tiny whereas the hand is larger than a human hand. So this hand type thing is said to be made of bone type material and some kind of skin. Just like the skull, the hand is also coated with clay. X-rays of this hand show that each finger has six bones. Human hands only have three. Each of the fingers also contains something that is thought to be a fingernail. But we don't know exactly what creature this hand is from. Some think that it's from an animal, others are convinced that it indeed is an alien hand. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Gosford Glyphs. The Gosford Glyphs refer to the rock carvings that seem to resemble ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics that were found in New South Wales. In Brisbane Water National Park, there is a site that contains two eight-foot-high walls that contain over 300 carvings. It is said that these glyphs are about 4,600 years old. Experts have ended up decoding the glyphs and say that in one section, it talks about two brothers coming here from Egypt. They got shipwrecked on this land and one got bitten by a snake and passed away. But the most striking carving is one that looks like an alien spaceship. It has a classic UFO shape with rays shooting down. Egyptologists are confused by this carving as it doesn't fit in with all the other ones. 
but they believe that it had to be significant in order for them to carve it. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that these markings show that people have been in contact with aliens before. In our fourth spot, we have the UFO tooth wheel. A Russian man was using coal to heat his home when he realized something odd sticking out of one of the pieces of coal. Researchers stated that it looked like a toothed wheel. Testing of this object revealed that it was 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. What's weird is humans didn't learn to make aluminum until 1825, but this coal piece is 300 million years old and the tooth object appears to be artificially made. This object resembles parts that are used in things like microscopes or electronic devices. So who created this object and what was it originally used for? Scientists are still conducting tests on the object with hopes of uncovering the answers to those questions. In our third spot, we have the Betts Mystery Sphere. On March 27, 1974, the Betts family were out examining a small brush fire near their property. While doing so, the family came across a completely smooth metal sphere about the size of a bowling ball. On the sphere, there was a triangle engraved on it. They took it home only to find out that it had very strange properties. One day when the Bet's son was playing his guitar in the same room as the sphere, the sphere started to emit a throbbing sound from it. The sound was strong enough to hurt the family's dog's ears. This sphere could also change direction, so if you pushed it or rolled it across the floor, it could roll forward, stop, and then roll right back to you. It was also said to be able to absorb power from solar energy, as it would be more active when exposed to the sun. The sphere would also sometimes emit vibrations as if something was operating on the inside of it. Now, they refused to let anyone analyze it until they linked the sphere to paranormal activity that started happening around their house. Like doors would slam or they would hear organ music around the house. So then they let scientists analyze it and said that it was just a normal sphere. But the family is convinced that something is controlling it. Maybe something of the extraterrestrial nature. Moving on to number two, we have the Brass Bell. In 1944, a 10-year-old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was shoveling coal into his furnace at his home. That's when a piece of coal was dropped and broke in half. Inside the coal revealed a mysterious bell. The coal that he was using was said to be about 300 million years old. Back then, the dominant life form on Earth was insects. So how could it have been manufactured back then? Also, the bell contained an unusual mixture of metals including copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Not a simple combination used to make objects. Now, a man named Boris Billis ended up taking the bell to the geology department at the University of Delaware. From there, they conducted studies and discovered that the bell was handmade. Now, of course, people were skeptical, thinking that the boy lied and didn't find the bell in coal. But in 2007, he underwent a polygraph test conducted by a specialist who worked on death row cases. It was discovered that he was indeed telling the truth. His report is even posted online for others to see. So people again have linked this strange object to aliens. And in our number one spot, we have the Wedge of Ayud. In 1974, construction workers in Romania were working in a village in Ayud. They were working near a river when they found a collection of strange objects buried 30 feet in the sand. Two of the objects were bones from mastodons, which are very distant relatives of the elephant. Beside the bones laid a mysterious wedge-shaped object. This object contained 89% aluminum, 6% copper, and a total of 12 elements all together. Like I mentioned previously, aluminum wasn't discovered until around 1825. Yet this wedge lay next to bones that are from around 11,000 years ago. The wedge itself is theorized to be around 10,000 years old. People believe that this object just couldn't have existed back then. An aeronautical engineer stated that this object looks exactly like a piece of a landing gear for landing aircraft. This has left researchers to believe that extraterrestrials crashed here around 11,000 years ago. And this piece is part of their spacecraft. Coming in at number 10, we have the Sarcophagus of Menkarur. The Great Pyramids house some of the most important people of their day. You have to imagine if thousands of people died to build a monument just to put a dead body in, then you'd have to be someone pretty important. I'll be lucky if my ashes get kept in a mayonnaise jar. But in one of the pyramids of Giza was the Sarcophagus of Menkarur. This was found by British explorer Howard Weiss. This should be no surprise, this was back in the 1800s, and we all know how much the English love to come through and take 
everything. One of the craziest things about Vice's excavation of the pyramids was the fact that he used explosives to blast his way inside. This dude clearly had a ton of respect for the architecture. Eventually, this guy's demolition style of getting into a pyramid got him what he wanted. He was face to face with the sarcophagus of Menakur. He hauled this thing out and then he slapped it on a boat to send it back to England. Well, on the way back, the boat sank. And since then, the treasure has been lost to man. In our number nine spot, we have the Yukon treasures. A size four moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9,000 years ago. Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon Mountains when they smelled something extremely strange. It was dung, yes, poop, from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number eight spot, we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of Western Mongolia, archeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently. However, after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1,500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number seven spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1,500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive live today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? In our number six spot, we have Iron Age tunic. Apparently, as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures, and some say it is about 2,000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items, in my opinion, is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly, not one item is better than the other. They all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived. But still, I think it is so cool cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number five spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful. So I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols. So anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our number four spot, we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. 
pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. Covered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war, so it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the Bow and Arrow War Days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container, and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine, and its rim was made from willow, sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Mm -hmm.